G'day, good morning, hello, whatever you are in the world. I am Graham Gordon Thomas. I am the rational environmentalist. What is an environment? They'll talk about all these things, environmentalism, environments and all that, but they don't actually allow a philosophical discussion about the meaning of it. And I, so I, it's what I want to bring to the world, or to the viewers, wherever they are, um, to explain an environment can be anything, environment, and what is the most important environment? The most important environment is you. Your mind, your heart, your emotions, your phys physical and mental well-being is the most important environment in the world. That's your first priority to look after is that environment. When you talk about environmental damage and things like that, they only talk about in reference to the damage that humanity is doing to what is called the natural environment. But humanity is part of the natural environment. We're intrinsically involved and totally connected in a very profound way to all of the different environments the multi-universe of environments that we exist within and we are just part of that and each part of us each part, our hands, our minds are all environments but the environment I want to sort of help people understand is the one where in the western world now they're saying that there's less sperm count in males why is that so? well as an evolutionist and that's what I am is I try to understand phenomena and how it changes through different environmental effects. That's what evolutionists do. We try to understand the effects of environmental phenomena on the various living organisms and now they transmute or how the information in the environment is transferred to the living organisms and how they adjust accordingly negatively or positively in the last three to four decades or so we have had such a thing called feminism and basically what the feminizer school education system and they've added fluoride into the water these two things have combined over the generations to reduce the sperm count in males if you emasculate the male they will reduce their testosterone which will reduce their sperm count it's that simple so if you put boys in a classroom in a feminized classroom where they're told they can't ask questions the boys can't compete with each other and that's how they do they show off by asking questions and answering questions that's basically forbidden now because the education is no longer about extending your mind but limiting the scope of it and that limiting the scope of the mentality of the male emasculates the male and it emasculates the potential to create testosterone and therefore lowers the sperm count it's very simple but also I, if you want to do, go further into this at the same time they've added fluoride into the water which I've never drank I've always avoided as much as possible drinking f fluoridated water I'm nearly 70 and I've got all my teeth and, <laughs> and, and the fluoride and this saving your teeth has got two totally different nothing to do with it all fluoride does is a deadener of the electrical circuits within your body so you might feel alive but you're not as alive as you may have been if you don't drink fluoride that's because you're not quite as aware and you're not quite as interactive with you. You think you are, but you're limited because the fluoride is dead now. It's like tuning down the spark in your car. You, we think it's going well, but until you take away and tune it properly, it goes really well. Now take away fluoride and you start to think and feel a lot better and start running really better. But you, had the, you combine these things, the emasculation of the male by the advent of feminism, and the idea that you've got to be subverted by bossy feminists at university and you're not allowed to sort of assert your maleness in a way because it may offend, it may be called sexist and 
It's actually being sexist saying you can't assert your manliness. That's being sexist. Very much so. But the idea of that, because there's a, and there are people in massive corporations behind this who understand this, and by, they know by lowering the testosterone level of males, lower the competition in the field, so reduce the impetus to be out, go out there and conquer. Therefore, you reduce the society's will, if you like. And so the society just puts up with the idea that the brainwashing it has about climate change, that it can do something about it, which creates a collectivism in the West. We don't have collectivism in the West, but they're creating collectivism by emasculating males, reducing their testosterone level, reducing their sperm count, and then create them into a sort of a collectivist thinking when it comes to tackling climate change. Well, that is an individual concern. If you're concerned about climate change, well, that's up to you as an individual. It's not you know, how we deal with it. It's up to you as an individual, because that's how we survive. It's dealing with it as an individual, not as a collectivism. Collectivism is North Korea. And if you want to survive like that, be go along with all the belief systems that they have about climate change. The thing is, though, what they don't tell you about feminism is feminism is Although they're ladies and they're weak females as such, basically they've been paid and bought by the major corporations which are hyper-powerful male or patriarchal uh, corporate systems. These females who have got revenge or something against males for some other reason, congenital inherited angers about males because of religious differences that cause and oppressed females in some societies like Australia, the corporations use this repressed angst and anger watching these women against males to draw them into their corporations, make them leading feminists who are against everything ending to do with males altogether. All males can be attacked just for being a male. These people are not actually females liberationists because as time goes by, female women, ordinary women, or not feminists will be more and more impoverished because of this system what's happening now. Because the feminists don't give a damn. Because they're just paid lackeys of major corporations. What's it to do with sperm count? The reason they want to reduce, they want to reduce. You know you, if you, you could program humans, you know you can do what you like and manipulate them one way or the other. And they know that eventually robots will replace humans to do most menial tasks. They won't need humans. Not long. So if you lower the cognitive abilities of humans, to tell the difference between truth and not truth, for instance, so they're driven down a path of collectivist thinking, collectivist truths, if you like. Well, eventually, you weaken the drive within the humanity. You lower the sperm count. You start weakening your breeding stock. So eventually, within um, 15, 20 years from now, you start weakening that particular race of people so they no longer they're basically submissive and serfs to the elite who are creating these programs and these elite are creating these programs so they know they don't need all these humans to do all the menial tasks they've got millions and millions of humans with no work for them because robots are much more reliable don't get emotionally upset don't have sickies they don't need holidays they don't need paying once you were uh, once you've employed them once you've bought one that's it that's your final outlay for that that individual work unit. And this is these elite know this, as well as many of us already have known it for many years, this was going to happen. And I'm just a uh, people who take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt. It doesn't matter to me what our people, what believe will believe or how they take things. That's entirely their, their, their own business point is sperm you can re by emasculating the male subjugating them to coercion by feminists in the classroom and feminist doctrine in the classroom anti-science feminist doctrine in the classroom by stopping men, boys competing in the classroom against each other intellectually those things then going to university not allowed to question not allowed to speak back that every time you go to ask a question you can't 
That's emasculating yourself, emasculating your soul. It's slowly shrinking your soul. It's creating a thing called redundancy within your feelings, emotions. So you don't feel like breeding. There's no hope to breeding because they're saying it's going to end the world if you breed anyway. So that switches that inclinations off to go out and conquer when you are being conquered. And that reduces sperm count. There are other things in the waters and in the perfumes and all that, all the men spraying perfumes on themselves. Well, if you want to spray perfumes all over yourself, where well, you're going to end up looking like a woman anyway, and you're going to lower your testosterone by, because what's in the perfumes is female hormones. So spray away, boys. Smell like a girl. And you'll end up attracting lots of boys. And that's what it's all about. But there you go. Sperm count, low sperm count, is created by pathologically regressing the, uh, if you like, genetics or the pathology within the uh, phenology of the human race what are being affected, particularly in the West, by this um, systematic political correctness, feminization of the systems and the emasculation and oppression of maleness. It's bound to you, especially maleness, you're bound to have less sperm count. It's as simple as that. And also another thing what people that male don't realise, if you don't do hard physical work, physical men's work, basically yeah, you're competing against other men when you do that, you will build your testosterone up just by doing that. Men build up testosterone by doing manly work, by doing physical work, by challenging themselves physically. That's what you have to do if you want to build up your testosterone. It's not, it's not that difficult. Go and do some heavy gardening or do something physical. Go and work on a road gang or whatever it is that you can do, what you can prove yourself. Because that's natural order of things. If you can think you can sit in your room tweeting away about climate change, you're going to grow into some big, strong, strong man. Uh, you may grow muscles, but your testicles and penis will shrink at the same time. So there you are. Low sperm count. It's sort of up to you to be a man, not be sort of submissive to some feminists, because that won't get you any more sex or make women like you any more than they do. This is uh, Graham Gordon Thomas, the rational environmentalist